Hi everybody, my name is Simon Lecomte. I'm an Enterprise Solution Architect with Hewitt Packard. Today's short session will be focused on the installation of HP Client Automation onto a Windows Server 2008 R2 server. The installation is very simple, but there's a couple of things we need to check before we start. There's a prerequisites document which I have listed on my website to what components and what the hardware recommendations are or you can find these in the admin guide. I've also ensured that I've installed in, uh, the Flash Player and a Java on the server before I've started. And the reason for doing that is the Java um, components are required for the reporting server and the console uses Flash. So if we install these up front, we don't have any issues at a later date. Now on your DVD or your download, you will find a uh, folder which we called HP uh, CA Core Win32 and we simply go and run the setup file. The installation is very simple and very straightforward. We simply click next, the accept the end user license agreement and click next. The installation folder, so C programs files, x86 because this is a R2 server Hewitt Packard HPCA and we click next and then we choose the data folder so this is where the data is stored in regards to um, HP client automation we can choose to leave it in the uh, default location or if you have a split drive install maybe move it to a D drive in this case we'll click next it's going to confirm the name of the server uh, that we're installing on and we click next uh, the two default ports used to communicate the web server port is 3466 and the configuration server port of 3464 and uh, note here modify windows firewall to allow communication through these ports it's currently grayed out because on my server i have turned off the windows firewall however if you have this enabled you can check this tick box to uh, have hp client automation install configure that component for you and we simply click next and this will go away and uh, install the required components once we get to the end of the installation um, it will run through what we call the first time setup wizard we actually have to log into the console and the first time setup wizard wants to know our license information uh, our SQL server that we're talking to um, and any configuration around the environment so for the demonstration today I have Microsoft SQL Server installed on this server. Uh, typically in an enterprise environment, you would have a SQL Server uh, existing in your device, uh, in, existing in your environment uh, on another server. You would need to create an ODBC connector to that server uh, before you went through the, the first time setup wizard. Okay, we're now on the end of the first part and we click finish. And the console will launch automatically I can see we have a couple of icons up here, the documentation folder, etc. So we'll put the console in full screen. The default login uh, from the factory install that we just completed is the username admin and the password is the word secret, S-E-C-R-E-T. And we'll go and log on. So here we are at the first time setup wizard. We just need to follow the, uh, the screens here. Uh, click next. Now we need a license key. Now if you do not have a license key, uh, this is a uh, proof of concept, or you're still waiting for your license key, you can just click next, and it will automatically generate a 50 node, 90 day standard edition key. So in this case, I'm just gonna click next. And we're gonna connect and to a uh, existing SQL server. Um, if you have Oracle that is only on the enterprise environment that you may use Oracle, but we click next And it's going to create a DSN called HPCA underscore core and the same with the database name I need to put the server host and in this case we're on the same server And the username and password so this is actually the SQL authentication 
not the Windows authentication, otherwise it will fail. So you may need to speak to your database administrator to ensure that you use a SQL authentication account to connect to the database and not a Windows authentication account. If your um, environment or SQL environment was on another server, this would be pointing to that. We click next. It's now testing the configurator that it can connect to the SQL server. The default options are for thin client management, operating system, patch and usage, as well as a number of other tasks as inventory and software usage. We click next and now it will uh, reconnect to that SQL database or SQL server and create a database called HPCA Core uh, that will be used for the uh, administration of HP client automation. This normally takes one to two minutes to complete. Okay, now the setup wizard has uh, completed the database configuration and we can simply click finish. And all we do now is log back in with the username of pass admin and secret. And we now have the HP client automation server installation complete. Uh, we can simply go and do the next step which is adding devices or importing devices and groups and deploying the agent to them which we'll cover in a separate video. So thank you very much for joining me today.